I mean, even before this hearing, the judge said, it's kind of a, you know, it's the, the her evidence is too circumstantial. It's a close call. The judge seemed resistant today. He felt that the evidence might was not that strong. Well, if the evidence provides enough probable cause to make an arrest, then the real question is, is he a flight risk? I would say that the guy who lives in Serbia, who has enough money to pay for these high-profile, high-powered attorneys, and by the way, I'm friends with Jane Weintraub, great lawyer, doesn't work cheap. I think he is a flight risk. And look, you can't ignore the circumstantial evidence here. I mean, but the fact messages? that the FBI agent said, oh, there was blood there, we're relying on Spanish authorities, and say, oh, we're wrong, there's no blood there. Even the judge, when they were showing a video of him allegedly coming out of the building with a suitcase, the judge almost squinted and said, is that a suitcase? And he's only been was in the building for nine minutes, so it seems to be skepticism on the part of the judge. He was in the building for nine minutes. He lives in Serbia. The, the building is in Madrid, right? right? Right, right, right. So, and he lied about being in Serbia. Then there's the text messages are pretty damning. Remember, this is not a murder prosecution yet. So the fact that there's no blood there, this is a case about a kidnapping. You don't have to have blood there to have a charge of kidnapping. Maybe if this was a murder case, the lack of blood is more important. But I think there's enough for probable cause. And because he's such a flight risk, I think they should keep him behind bars. Let's talk about that in one second. I want to go to Mark. Mark, I want to play you something. So David's attorneys were asked this about the evidence that I mentioned, right? The idea that they have video of him allegedly buying uh, spray paint in a, at this store, this video of him, uh, sp you know, spray painting the cameras. Um, bad evidence. This is what the attorney had to say. We don't know who that is. We don't know why that happened. But that's not the issue. What we do know is that the agent testified there was no struggle, there was no taking, and there's no evidence of any foul play in that apartment. So is it possible that that's not him? Yeah, I was going to say, is it possible that the person in the video is I'm him? Not gonna, I'm not going to. That's what the government plays. The government says, well, it's possible. You know what? We're in the United States of America. We don't put somebody in jail on a possibility. I don't know, Mark. Is that a good lawyer answer? Or is that avoiding what could be really bad evidence for a client? Well, like David, I know Jane, and she's great. And uh, by the way, this this supposedly iron-clad uh, case, the it could, this judge was not convinced. I don't think anybody who didn't have a dog in this fight would have been convinced. Uh, it's clear to me, at least that uh, they don't have what they claim they had, and it, it actually was somewhat embarrassing for the prosecution today. And I think this judge is going to release them. By the way, I will agree with David to this extent that, yes, you're only looking at probable cause, but as my uh, late uh, father used to say, probable cause just means, is my client breathing? <laughs> well, look, Mark, here's the thing. We're showing you some images, and, and I, I go back to that other piece of evidence, this idea that he had asked to translate or allegedly asked to translate the very text that was sent from Anna's phone. And you also think about who else would be responsible for a kidnapping when there's this kind of tumultuous relationship. Um, it, it just feels tough for the defense at this point to argue maybe they'll get, maybe he won't be detained, but I don't think this is a case where there's not enough evidence to go forward with trial. Oh, I, I beg to differ. I can think of at least three other alternatives for the translation of the text based on the timing. Can you give I, me one? The judge can you give me an alternative for that? What's an alternative <laughs> for that? I uh, just, I'm not going to, I'm not okay. going to do Jane's work for her. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just tell good. you that there clearly, there clearly is one very other uh, likely explanation for for that translation, number one. Number two, as the judge indicated, even if this was the person and he had trouble saying that it was by looking at it, and he all he had to do was uh, uh, observe it and make that identification himself, said he couldn't do it. He also completely undercut the timeline that in nine, nine minutes something happened. And by the way, as Dave also pointed out, our Dave, not that Dave, uh, the, this is uh, supposedly a kidnapping. He, uh, the idea that somehow she was crammed into a briefcase uh, or a suitcase or something else yeah. and carried out. Uh, this guy's got superhuman strength. It really, they, look, you can make up you can make up facts any way you want them, but here they tend to be. So, like, who are you going to believe? Your eyes or what actually was happening there? Well, that's that's the point I want to end on, Dave. Why wasn't he charged with murder? Is it because they don't feel they have quite enough? Enough yet, and maybe shows a weakness in their case. They charge him with kidnapping, and it makes me wonder how would he have transported her out of the apartment? So, why not charge him with murder yet?
And they're working on it. And one of the reasons why they charged him with kidnapping was to keep him behind bars while they continue to investigate the murder case. Hey, thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget, click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.